Welcome everyone to the 200th Knowledge Seekers Workshop for Thursday, November 30th, 2017. I can hardly believe that I said the word 200th there. That's quite amazing uh, experience the last uh, few years now of these workshops. And uh, thank you to Flint for putting together that uh, presentation that we just saw showing all the um, uh, some of the highlights from the last 200 or 199 at least workshops. Um, now I'd like to present um, a bit about some of the products that are available from the Cash Foundation before we get into the main part of the workshop here. So just uh, bear with me a second while I get that lined up. Okay, let me see. Okay, website. Okay. okay, I just get this expanded so we can see it. This is the keshfoundation.org website. And if we go into the store part of the website, you have a choice of the KF USA and the KF store. Uh, in this case, I'll go to the KF store and we see a promotional product here. That's um, something you can click on. on uh, Rick, you just have to change your view there. Oh, didn't over. Sorry. Yeah, let me share um, the desktop rather than the window in case we change windows. Okay, let me give that to you again. And I'll just back up. So from the Cash Foundation main uh, store, which we can see here, you have a choice between the USA or the KF store. And you, if you click on the KF store, it brings you to this page which shows the KF SSI logo cup. And that's the gateway into finding out more about some of the other products that are available that you might want for yourself or for someone else, perhaps, perhaps for Christmas is a good idea. And we have uh, basic uh, t-shirts with the logo and hats, uh, button, women's t-shirts, um, coffee mug, etc. And when you click on these pictures, it takes you to the Zazzle site. It's called Zazzle. And that's people that make these t-shirts. And um, you can order directly from this site. And when you do that, 20% of the sales go back to the Cash Foundation. So you're in effect donating to the Cash Foundation um, through buying the products here. And um, in this uh, case, for example, Zazzle often has sales on the products. So this t-shirt as well as other t-shirts today have a special 30% off with this uh, code at the top here that you can see. Um, so between the 30% off, then it actually becomes uh, quite economical to buy this t-shirt. For example, it's at uh, $12.43, that'd be in US dollars uh, currently with the code. And um, so we have other, you can select your size, you can select different uh, styles and types of t-shirts and uh, as well as other many other products are also available. Uh, if we go into the actual, here's the, the KFSSI button. I think that's kind of 
kind of nice. Um, if we go into the products, there are um, see other products such as uh, iPhone case. Um, let's see what else. There's um, uh, things like, uh, oh, that's not the one I was after. There's one I did like that, that there it is. Whoops, it's not showing. I have to, uh, I have to sign in in order to do that. Let me just do that. Hang on a second here. I'll do that offline and get back into the products. All right, so back to the Zazzle site. It's the Keshe Foundation Spaceship Institute Zazzle site, which is actually um, the home for that is, um, just uh, get it up here. It's under www.zazzle.com. That's Z A Z Z L E or Z Z A Z Z L E. If you happen to be American or other parts of the world that say Z instead of Z, uh, but in any case, it's www zazzle.com slash cash foundation all one word you can see it at the top there just cash foundation and that's the access point or you can access it through the website like i showed is another way and there's a number of products that and it's an ongoing thing we have a number of products that are that we're putting the uh logo on here's a nice uh stein mug if you're you like that kind of thing. Uh, let me see what's some of the other products here. Uh, there's another example of an iPhone case. In this case, it's the Otter, a well-known, uh, very tough iPhone case. Uh, stainless coffee mug and various other products you might like. Uh, a nice tie, for example, with the KFSSI logo on it. And uh, I thought this was interesting too. It's a, a wood wooden uh, Samsung phone case with the KFSSI logo on it. Okay, so that gives you some idea of what's available on that. Uh, Zazzle site. And you're bringing and, more gear out regularly, aren't you, Rick? Yes, we put the brand on different things and we have different brands coming out as well. So that if you're, for example, if you're a, um, <clears throat> maybe you're a teacher in a workshop and in a, a official Cash Foundation workshop, well, you can have your official Cash Foundation workshop logo um, put on t-shirts so that people in your workshop can buy the t-shirts and you could either have them already pre-bought from the site uh, or you could have them order directly on the site they could even even do that uh, you know right from the workshop if you wanted to so it's an interesting way to uh, to market the goods and this it's not like it's it's not like it's we're in it for the profit really it's more just in getting out the cash foundation name and that that brand as something that people can be curious about and you know start to ask questions about and it's a good conversation starter that's correct sure. yeah it's such a beautiful logo it's very colorful and uh and uh, sometimes some of the products have um, the same, we replicate the same technology as the universe on them, for example, and other uh, texts that can also be put on and we're working on that. You can have different t-shirts with uh, some of our favorite sayings from Mr. Cash, for example, and that sort of thing. So that's all being worked on. And uh, what other uh, products do we have from 
you see from the Keshe Foundation itself, you've got uh, well the the Magrav systems and uh, various products that you can see here, including the Pain Pad and Pain Pen, which are some of the old favorites. Shows the books are available. I'm not sure if they're are they available right now? The uh, books or are they currently waiting printing? Not sure if they're available right now to to order. They're on the good website. Sorry. Yes, sorry. Good morning. Good day to you. Whenever, whenever you listen to us, the books are paid for over for four or five thousand. We pay the company in Belgium twenty five thousand, and they refuse to deliver it. And we will announce how you can get it. Give you their address and telephone number. You can call them and demand your book. We paid for it. I'm going to advertise it across the internet, the name of the company, that they cannot defraud people like this. So the books already paid for over six months now, and it's a fraud again through the Belgium structure. And we do not take court cases because we know what they do there. They intimidate everyone. So. What we do, we're going to give you the address to telephone number of the gentleman, the director, and the company, and we put it across right internet. They can take money and don't deliver. So your books, you can demand it, they'll deliver it to you, and we'll see what happens. But the books are there, printed, ready. They're actually about eight, nine thousand of them. Sorry about that, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cash. Thank you. Um, this is one product that uh, Ella wanted to be promoted for Christmas. It's uh, the GANS Bulb Humidifier, which is an interesting product. Um, basically, it plugs into your USB port of your computer or some other USB connection, and it emits a, uh, a vapor from the uh, water that you put in. Now, you can put in distilled water or I guess you could use tap water, but distilled water would definitely be best. And the kit comes with some dried GANs that you add to the uh, to the bulb, apparently. And there's a little video here. Let me uh, let me try to play it. I'll have to change my settings just a second. It's working fine, Rick. Oh, is it? Okay, I don't have to optimize. You think? Nope, it's just a small video. Okay, I think it goes bigger though when I click on it up here. So, I'm not sure if this is going to work. <laughs> we'll try it. Did you see that? Okay. Yeah, it came through fine. Thank you. Okay, because I can't tell when I do that, I go to full screen and everything else cuts out on my other two screens. Anyway, okay. So that's um, that's a, a lovely a lovely product, actually, I think. And there's very various other products that are shown on the uh, website that you can scroll through and see if you're interested in. And at the bottom, there's a place to make a donation for those that would are feeling in the Christmas giving spirit. Now is a good opportunity to make if these are in handy donate uh, donation increments of ten euros, one hundred euros, and one thousand one thousand euros that you can click on and it's preset ready to go. Okay, uh, I guess that's about. Is there anything else I should be showing there, Vince? That um, no, that everything is good. I think we should move into we, the next part. We could look at the KF SSI uh, US store. Maybe we'll do that uh, for next week's installment. All right. Okay, Flint. Maybe you want to bring back the. Uh, our, our yeah. Sure regular screen there. Yeah, sure. And I think, Mr. Cash, would you like to introduce the next part of the uh, of the proceedings here? I believe we're going to hear from from Rui. Is that correct? Yes. Shall I start? Sure. Um, 
Let me just get the screen going here and no problem. Yeah, it should be ready to go. Go ahead, thank you. Well, as, uh, as usual, as we said, good morning to you, good day, wherever and whenever you listen to these knowledge seekers workshops. We have endeavored 200 plus public teaching. Overall, we have something like 300 teachings, public teachings recordings, which runs to run about over a thousand hours. Every aspect of the technology, every secret in technology has been set and each one of you, according to your interest, have developed part of it. And in a way, it has become a structure of knowledge, science. And in so many ways, we'll see further developments. Each one of us has taken one word or one sentence which it tuned with our heart, with our soul and we've done something about it. Over the past nearly four years plus we have seen people like Alex coming up with the beats, the Magraph systems, the what we call the pain pens, the pain pads, the every other aspects of the ganses which are coming in, the establishment of the factories now, which will run to tens of town, tens of factories with thousands of workers in it in the coming up time. We are investing heavily in these things. This has not, is not one person. This is all of us. This is a humanity taking steps, making the move to bring the change. 200 hour teaching is led us to a lot of progress, recognition by many governments, by many organizations. In so many ways, collectively, we have started writing the new ethos for humanity, be it on the science, be it on the intellect, being on interaction of our own existence within ourselves, understanding of this meaning of the soul for the first time, understanding how we can become man of space without so much as we've seen in the past. But we have to understand, without the past, there wouldn't have been us. None of us would have been educated by the scientists before, could have understand this new phase. In so many ways, knowledge is a ladder, and you cannot escape one. Maybe you can, but the second one, if you don't put your step on it, your foot on it, you cannot rise up. We are building on the steps which other scientists build up. Brilliant mind, like Tesla. People who understood the work of the universe, but in the strength of the matter state. We see brilliant scientists, like Professor Miles. These are the people who have, and they'll be recognized in time, for the developments they brought in understanding of the work of the magnetic fields, even though sometimes they themselves could not break through. In so many ways, we as totality have brought this together. We as us, as one family, have brought everything together. Now we have established a one nation, one planet. Now the establishment of the Earth Council, the Universal Council. The setting up of the factories is very important. With it comes the banking, with it comes with governing, with it comes to be able to make changes which has been needed for a long time, but nobody endeavored to do, because everyone saw themselves not be big enough to stand the bigger people. Now it's us, we are bigger than anybody else, as a Keshe Foundation family. We have gathered enough strength, that we can make change. Over 100 million regular visitors, regular people who work around the Foundation ethos, or the knowledge, has been established. We have established a base, more or less, in the mind, in the soul, in the body of a man, on every country, every island on this, on this planet. <coughs> sometimes we will see further developments rapidly, sometimes, we'll see stop, and then move again. Because that stop meant we needed maturity. We needed to mature, we needed to understand. There's a lot of 
a deep understanding. Many, many of you, in the past week, two weeks, three weeks, that we start explaining more about the structure of the soul, are moving into that direction. Because you have found, there is more than me, and I make the change. You have found that, there is more and more of me, that can do more. I do not need to be to do, I need to understand what I can do without being there. Teachings has been solid. Teachings has been very much step by step, gradually building up and building up to the level that, as I said in past two or three weeks, we have entered a new dimension of teaching. In a short time to come, you will see a lot of silences in my teaching. If you've been on the teachings in past two or three weeks, especially last Tuesday, last Thursday, I take a lot of time silence. Because it's the time when I work with the soul. When I pass the message on, in a way that reaches the soul of those who are ready to receive. This is how, in a space, when we don't have mouth, when we don't have eyes, we can communicate. When I go silent, you will go silent. And you'll be able to see what is there that is comes, that you receive. In space, when we see people of the space, we cannot speak. They don't make noises. They have no mouth, they have no eyes. But they have a beautiful soul. This is part of the teaching. Listen to the last Tuesday public teaching, with the Councils, and last Thursday, and before. You see a lot of step gap, a lot of silence part. These are put in there, as I told you, when I started this three, four weeks ago, maybe more, we stopped the teaching, because it's exhausting. Because it's not just by teaching by word, it's teaching the soul of the man, elevating the soul of everyone who is listening. You look for it, while there is a silence. Our boy is telling something. So, the silence is important. He's not searching for word, he's receiving the message through the soul of the man. We need to do this, we have to do it. It's part of the training of becoming man of the space. It's no use if you speak English and end up in the middle of Frankfurt, nobody understands, everybody speaks German, you start shouting, you want to, glass of water, nobody understands you. It's the same in the space. There's no use making, shouting, because they don't understand. Learn to transfer knowledge, learn to transfer feeling, through the soul of the man, they will understand, they will respond. Eyes, mouth, is one of the very few attributes of being man of earth. When we start talking through our soul, we create peace. This is the next step to World Peace Treaty, this is the next step to writing the Universal Council, if you read in the agenda of the Earth Council, you see it says there are words in there, three or four, which is indicative of being man of space, preparing human race for a space where we cannot carry dictionaries, but we carry the dictionary of the universe, which is the soul of the man, the language of the soul is the same. In so many ways, this is part of the teaching. In so many ways, very slowly, we are walking in to the next step. We will not be able to carry everyone with us. Each one of us, in stages where we are happy to be, will take from this knowledge. We are developing, <coughs> we are developing the new space science. Just one second, please. I have to get the little boy. Hmm. 
my little boy is too nervous, there are noises coming. So, what we need is to understand what is the language of universe. Is to understand how do we have to react to these conditions. What are the conditions we have to educate ourselves in? Bravo, little boy, bravo. So, we understand how much and how far we still have to go. The space labs, which are getting developed, the space fuels, the space reactors, new type of reactors is getting developed in different part of the world, by different knowledge seekers. We are gradually reaching the point of opening a new dimension in knowledge, in the space, in energy. But at the same time, this is not the end. This is the beginning of a new era. This is the beginning of a new adventure for all of us and our future generation. So, 200 teachings becomes the cornerstone of, literally from now on, the next 200 will be totally and more and more in the direction of the space development, space travel. Hopefully by the time we reach 300 or 400, we are already in space. Different part of the Keshe Foundation research people are developing every aspect. You have to understand there are two phases to the work of the Foundation. Governmental side has already achieved lift and motion. It's us who's got to do it. And the governments know that they cannot hide because the knowledge has been taught so openly. In the next few weeks, you will see the production of the material in the space level. We'll bring, we'll show, we demonstrate systems which can produce materials as we need in the space. That itself will be a breakthrough. We'll see the Magrav systems which supported with the star formation, supported with the new power supplies which we have developed, that makes us independent in flight. These are what we'll see to come. One of the problems we see at the moment with all our flight system, the star formations, is because they are connected to a power supply which is matter state, or is connected to the wall that the motor runs. So all the fields, as you've seen how you nanocode the wires in the walls when you put your Magrav system, go down the line. So you cannot build a spaceship to lift when you already have a leakage in the safe. You cannot build the plasma, you cannot fill the balloon of the plasma. Because whether you are making a reducing, you are letting go. Secondly, having the battery operated reactors to create motion is impossible, because then the matter state comes into operation. The new development of the PPUs is not for power generation become freestanding generators. These are freestanding generators for the space reactor. This is why I developed it. But is there if we need to use it to support, to change situations like war between Iran and Saudi, which is looming on the horizon. We can make a change. And it will be so rapid that it will bring it. But in reality, the new plasma power units, what you call off-grid, is totally for a space system. Because the energy created is in the plasma state. So when it feeds into the plasma reactors, creates a condition of containment and energy, which will allow the whole system to become independent. This is the beauty of what is to come. This is where the development is. In the past few days, as we announced, different groups of Keshe Foundation, different researchers, are developing new, new, extremely new systems for space development. When we will see, when we will show the new material, matter state elements, like zinc, like copper, like gold, like nickel, and the rest, we are not producing it to be the matter state. We are producing them, that in a space we produce structures which are like human being structures. They are not made of solid steel, but they are made of the fields of the steel, which means no other external fields can affect them. To stay the property is very much the structure of the body of the man. Our structure is made of ganses. So, 
we have the structure, but flexible structure that it can stand heat, wind or whatever. Structures in the space, despite the present belief that we have to breathe concrete block, aluminium frame blocks, we build them, but there will be dynamic system, plasma, GAN systems, the way we see the body of the man is made of. All the entities in the universe are built this way, so we have to follow if we are going to succeed in the space technology. Our bone is a structure that way. So is a shell of an egg. So we have to, to, to be able to live in the space, we need to develop these technologies. Not for us, but for what we are there to achieve, what we are there to bring for the new generations, the future generations. Very much inter-race generations which will come. We've seen the marriage of Africans with Chinese, with Americans, with Europeans. In a coming time, we'll create children of the soul of the man and other souls in the universe that the new soul decides how it wants to manifest itself. Would they look like China African children or would they look like Euro African children? They'll have their own beauties. We've seen them, we lived with them, and the interface of the soul to confirm itself to manifestation of physicality in the marriage of souls in space is as normal as every day you eat and you breathe. This is some new understanding which will come. We will fall in love with the soul we meet in the deep space, and it'll be still the soul of children that will be born out of the man and other races in the space. Not the way we are used to it, out of the physical interaction, but understanding the existence of the soul and emotion can decide the manifestation of the physicality of the new soul. Then the mother will see from Earth the child in the eighth phase, and the father from another dimension of the space will see his child his way. This is the beauty of it, both can love the same. It's very much when we see Afro-Chinese, the father's Chinese father, he sees the character of Chinese in the face of his child, as the African mother sees the beauty of the African face in his child. This is what is going to come. These are on the horizon, we cannot escape. These are the consequences of developing new dimension in the science of man. It's very much what we had by finding United States, as we called it in the new continent all from all corners of the universe, on this planet, moved there and they mixed. Now no one knows what's what, because it's mixed so much from every race. This is inevitable when we go into space, or when we open the door to eyes of ourselves and see people of the universe who's been amongst us, now we can recognize them. Then we understand, even today, there are mixed children amongst us. This is the beauty of life on this planet. These are what is to come, the new space reactors, this new space, what we call generators for the plasma only, is what will change the course of humanity. The same power generator plasma will produce any food you need, anything, any energy which you might need, any sources of life which you might want to extend to be part of your life. As we said, the world, the universe is your oyster. It depends how you want to open that oyster. Would you like to enjoy the flesh, or would you like to enjoy the pearl? That's on the way you decide. The humanity has been given a new chance, and we are there to explore. I'm sure, by the knowledge seekers of 400, Many of us will have a total understanding, new understanding of new space technology. The biggest problem we have is ourselves. The biggest problem is us understanding, appreciating the beauty of the new knowledge which we learn. If we do not learn, we do not progress. We cannot go to the next step. And we see the others go but we cannot understand. What I'd like to do, as I know who is in the background waiting to read the Portuguese 
Earth Council mandate, what we call, as it is, if you can put up the uh, constitution in Portuguese that we can read to us, I have asked the Arabic version to be read next week, as part of the peace program we are running between Iran and Saudi Arabia. After that, we will ask Dr. Paris or Azhar to read the Persian version of it. And we are going to the other languages. In a way, we remind ourselves, don't forget, doesn't matter in what language is read, it's the soul of the man who has got to appreciate it. Can you, can you let us have the Portuguese version for Mr. Rui to read it, please? Uh, good morning, Mrs. Kesh, it's uh, who is speaking. You want I share my screen, right? Please, we don't want to see your desktop, we just want to... <laughs> Yes, yes, I will. I'll do who it. is a member of the Universal Council of Portuguese Language? So, this uh, I'm showing, it's the um, yeah. in Portuguese version of the... We have program. not seen it, you have not shared the screen yet. Not yet? Okay, uh, because I'm in a computer and I'm uh, in in my phone. I'm speaking through my phone, but I'm trying to share it through the computer. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Should be there now. Yeah. Yes, it is there now. Yes, go okay. ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start speak Portuguese. Uh, bom dia, boa tarde ou, ou boa noite, onde quer que estejam todos os ouvintes e seguidores da língua portuguesa. Eu vou passar a ler na versão portuguesa do Manifesto da Constituição do, do Conselho da Terra da Fundação Cash. E começa assim, nós, as almas de todos os seres conectados ao planeta azul Terra, por este meio criamos a constituição do planeta azul Terra, uma nação, um planeta, uma raça. Constituição. O Conselho da Terra foi criado para garantir que ao dar direitos iguais a todos os seres, nunca haverá outro conflito ou guerra neste planeta ou para além dele, que seja criado por qualquer um ou qualquer dos cidadãos, ou qualquer dos seres criados. O fim da guerra e o estabelecimento da paz serão alcançados através da compreensão do potencial de todos os seres criados. O caminho para a paz deve ser a consciência de que as soluções são alcançadas através do diálogo e elevação da alma do adversário, e não através da sua degradação ou rebaixando a sua própria alma ou existência física. A paz tem que ser o objetivo de cada intenção na existência de todo o ser neste planeta. O Conselho será o portador da bandeira desta emoção para criar um ambiente onde a paz possa ser alcançada na Terra. A paz deve ser a pedra angular da existência entre aqueles que são deste planeta e eu optem por viver neste planeta, bem como para aqueles que são da Terra e optem por viver no espaço. A Terra tem que se tornar o berço da paz para a evolução de todas as raças. Nós, o Conselho da Terra, reconhecemos que a Terra faz parte do Sistema Solar, Galáxia, Universo e todos os únicos. Como tal, o planeta Terra precisa se tornar uma parte do ciclo da criação, apoiando o planeta e todos os seres que nele vivem para se levarem além do ciclo atual de evolução para uma existência mais satisfatória e pacífica. Nós reconhecemos a Mãe Terra como uma entidade viva, que tem a sua própria alma. Desde cada átomo, as plantas, animais, humanos, insetos, micróbios e mais, e ainda todos aqueles que não foram descobertos, são almas que compartilham a essência do Criador e os campos do planeta Terra. Juntos, combinamos-nos para formar a alma coletiva do planeta. Nós reconhecemos que todos os outros seres neste planeta precisam ser apoiados, nutridos e autorizados a prosperar em paz, incluindo animais, plantas, ecossistemas e todos os seres invisíveis, bem como a própria Mãe Terra. Todos serão apoiados para crescer e prosperar, pois isso 
por sua vez, melhorará as, as vidas, não apenas neste planeta, mas em toda a totalidade, como, tal como reconhecemos que somos uma parte do todo. Cooperação mútua, colaboração, partilhar e a contribuição para o bem-estar de todos deve ser o principal empreendimento do Conselho da Terra. Nosso objetivo é apoiar o planeta como um todo e todo o ser que mora aqui. Serviremos para criar um ambiente de nutrição e harmonia em que todos os seres possam crescer e prosperar à sua única maneira. Os seis membros do Conselho da Terra. Cada continente da Terra é representado por um membro, sendo eles África, Ásia, Austrália, Europa, América do Norte e América do Sul. Cada membro representa as necessidades e os desejos dos povos que vivem no continente, bem como a totalidade dos seres que residem lá. O processo de seleção. Os membros devem ter vivido em pelo menos dois continentes e falar pelo menos duas línguas. Isso permite uma perspectiva mais ampla de compreensão quando se trata de levar em consideração as necessidades de toda a humanidade. A claridade das almas. Os seis membros do Conselho da Terra estão aqui para servir em consciência de suas almas através da manifestação da fisicalidade. O mandato do Conselho da Terra é para apoiar e servir, fornecer e proteger. Fazer surgir em nossas almas o entendimento de que o poder para nos governarmos está dentro de cada um de nós, na interação com outras almas, criando uma coexistência pacífica. Nossa intenção é fazer surgir o melhor do melhor em cada alma viva neste planeta azul que chamamos Terra. Dar a manifestação das nossas almas na fisicalidade, a liberdade de viver em paz, amor e confiança neste planeta e no espaço. Nossos desejos são para que todos os seres vivos na criação possam habitar em paz, harmonia e tranquilidade. É hora de acessar e compartilhar recursos em igualdade de forma justa e correta entre todos os seres. O Conselho da Terra servirá e apoiará o fornecimento a todos os seres humanos do seguinte. Primeiro, liberdade de associação. Segundo, liberdade de expressão. Terceiro, liberdade de movimento. Quarto, livre da fome. Quinto, livre da falta de recursos. Seis, liberdade para explorar o caminho para entender a sua própria alma. Sete, liberdade para aprender. 8. Liberdade para contribuir para a sociedade de acordo com os nossos talentos e capacidades e com o que nos encontramos a cumprir. 9. Liberdade para escolher através da nossa alma como e quando desejar manifestar-se na fisicalidade ou não. 10. Livre de ser propriedade de outro. 11. Libertação de toda a supressão de te tecnologia e informação nova e inovadora para aplicações pacíficas. 12. Liberdade para compartilhar. 13. Liberdade de pensar. 14. Liberdade para amar e dar. 15. Liberdade de escolha. 16. Liberdade de linguagem e idioma. 17. Liberação de um sistema monetário. 18. Livre de castigo sem cativeiro ou execução. 19. Liberdade de ser contra conflitos e guerra. E 20. Libertar-se do medo dos outros negando-nos essas liberdades. Não haverá fronteiras nacionais ou regionais, nenhuma distinção entre cores, raças ou caminhos de crenças e sem preconceitos culturais ou barreiras monetárias que dividam um do outro ou deem uma vantagem justa a um sobre o outro. Não haverá títulos hereditários ou papéis de liderança herdados que englobem a monarquia, a ditadura militar ou a realeza de qualquer tipo. Não haverá medo de punição por qualquer crime a elevação da alma daqueles que fazem o mal permitirá a abolição de todas as formas de prisão e pena de morte. Através da educação e do compartilhamento do conhecimento ao nível da alma, todos os seres se elevar se -ão. O castigo não tem lugar para o nível da alma na compreensão de sua própria força de campo. Não há necessidade de um sistema monetário em que se trocam bens e serviços por trabalho. Criaremos um ambiente onde o dinheiro não tem lugar na sociedade. Quando todas as necessidades físicas de todos os seres forem cumpridas, o trabalho será feito para trazer prazer aos outros e a nós mesmos. O fim do sistema monetário trará a era de seres humanos saudáveis e o verdadeiro amor entre todos neste planeta azul-terra.
o trabalho deve ser para a alegria pura ou o prazer de servir os outros e levar a alma dos outros, assim como de nós mesmos. Todos aqueles que desejam servir como tomadores de decisões e guias podem oferecer-se para servir com a consciência da sua alma e obter o consentimento dos outros, para que possam cumprir o papel requerido. A elevação da consciência permitir-nos-á reconhecer as forças de campo únicas de uma alma que lhes permitirá servir para o benefício dos outros e levar a humanidade toda. Essas pessoas servirão para iluminar e inspirar elevação em outros. A liderança vem da alma do homem e com o acordo dos outros para servir. Nós respeitamos todas as formas de todas as entidades neste planeta azul terra e além dele. Todo ser no planeta terá as mesmas liberdades. Aqueles que são livres para a viver em paz com todos os outros, em um ambiente de dignidade e respeito mútuos. Todos devem ter a liberdade de escolha para viver de, da maneira que desejam, desde que tenham consideração e respeito pelos outros. Todos os seres do planeta devem ser apoiados para permitir que vivam sem escassez. O acesso básico ao abrigo, à água, à alimentação, à segurança, aos materiais, à liberdade do uso do campo de energia, terra ou recursos universais, deve ser uma prioridade, bem como a paz e a estabilidade para permitir o bem-estar emocional e a busca da iluminação. Toda a diversidade é reconhecida como expressões únicas e diversas do Criador e será abraçada e celebrada como trazendo riqueza para nossas almas. Todo ser deve ser apoiado e encorajado a obter conhecimento. A humanidade, em particular, precisa da liberdade para explorar e entender esse conhecimento, o que só pode ser obtido sem a necessidade de trabalhar constantemente para sobreviver. Criar as ferramentas para se tornar independente, os seres humanos autorresponsáveis devem ser uma prioridade. A alma dos seres ditará e guardará em um modo de vida responsável justo, correto e verdadeiro, em benefício de toda a criação, em medidas iguais. Pela primeira vez na história do homem, por vontade própria ao nível da alma, o aprendizado começará por conhecer a alma desde a infância. Quando as catástrofes naturais acontecem, devemos ajudar com todos os seres dessa área, não mostrando qualquer preferência e apoiando todos. Isso inclui a compreensão dos ecossistemas do planeta e o que os seres precisam no seu ciclo de vida. Todos os seres terão acesso e compartilharão recursos em tempo de abundância e em tempo de desastre. Quando surge um conflito, devemos negociar uma solução pacífica para todas as partes, pois deve ser oferecida a toda a humanidade uma paz duradoura. Isso só é possível quando todas as partes forem tidas em consideração. Todos os seres merecem proteção contra danos à sua fisicalidade e emoções. Processo de tomada de decisão. Nenhuma maioria violará as liberdades de qualquer minoria. O consenso será alcançado através do diálogo e da elevação da alma do homem. Cada decisão deve ser benéfica para todos. Todo ser deverá ser respeitado, tratado de forma justa e igual em todos os aspectos. As almas dos seres governarão cada ação de forma pacífica. Trazer a paz ao planeta e a todos os que aqui vivem deve ser sempre esse o nosso objetivo. Satisfazer as necessidades de todos é a única maneira de conseguir isso. E um convite que venham todos os seres do mais pequeno ao maior da criação para celebrar, apreciar e abraçar a paz, o amor, a confiança e a liberdade. Todos os seres estão aqui para se elevarem e alcançarem o mais alto nível de consciência humana ou elevação das almas. Todas as almas renunciam a todas as armas de agressão, ao ódio e diferenças. Vamos ter a paz e tranquilidade neste planeta azul a que chamamos Terra. Todos os seres vivos virão, viverão em harmonia com todas as criações neste planeta azul a que chamamos Terra e com todo o Universo. Os princípios orientadores da conduta física são apropriados até ao momento em que as almas dos homens compreendem o seu funcionamento e posição dentro dos limites dos princípios universais. A alma merece conhecer tudo em diferentes níveis da criação. Todas as almas vivas têm a liberdade 
de igualdade para viver em paz e prosperar aqui na Terra e além. As armas, perdão, as almas de todos os seres trarão o melhor dos talentos, forças e belezas para compartilhar e florescer ao longo da criação. Sobre o poder, o poder das almas para governar todos os seres vivos aqui na Terra, o poder não foi dado a lidas ou entidades com o propósito de controlar ou dominar os outros, mas vem de dentro de nós para amar e dar a paz, o amor, a felicidade e a liberdade aos outros. Esta constituição terrena tem as melhores intenções para fomentar a paz, o amor e confiança e a liberdade das almas de todos os seres vivos, incluindo outras entidades ao longo da criação. Esta constituição é para capacitar todos os seres a fazerem a coisa correta para o prazer de trabalhar e servir lado a lado e com todas, perdão, e com outras almas para verem a beleza na criação. Esta constituição é fluida e pode ser ajustada a qualquer momento em caso de necessidade, por exemplo, a conduta do homem para a coexistência pacífica, os tratados de paz entre os homens, sem guerras e ou qualquer forma de agressão neste planeta azul, que chamamos Terra, e contacto com outras entidades de diferentes áreas dos universos. Tem o aditamento. Esta secção destina-se a estar em branco para emendas adicionais no futuro, quando necessário para manter a paz permanente neste planeta azul, Terra e além. Escrito pelas almas dos povos do planeta azul Terra, representado pelos membros do Conselho da Terra. E temos um contacto de e-mail, que é o pisarroba.treatconcil.org, que é onde se devem dirigir por escrito. Uh, sempre ao Conselho da Terra, a qualquer momento, que seja necessário e que entendam que há uma solução a ser necessária. Muito obrigado a todos por ouvirem. E vou passar a palavra. Ok, it was done. Um... Thank you very much. <coughs> Another beautiful language. What man has got himself to be able to express his emotions and his life. Um... Anything anybody would like to speak? Anything from the Universal Council members or the Earth Council members? Good morning, Mr. Kesh. Good morning. Good morning. This is Aza, the Universal Council of Policy. I like to uh, say something um, about what uh, the journey we're going through, and uh, um, one of the things I want to mention is uh, we live in a planet that uh, there's so many. Um, so many things are going on for decades and decades and thousands of years. And what I want to bring uh, everybody's attention is, uh, or at least what I see, uh, without anything happen that we see on a, uh, on a level of, uh, on a level of uh, mass media, I like to everybody pay attention to on a daily basis what is been going on beyond the scene and not focusing on what we see on on the news uh, anything that uh, on a daily basis we have seen in our own countries uh, for past uh, 100 years or i don't know 200 years 300 years and each of us know uh, what those those issues what are those problems and uh, we can bring it up without they showing up on tvs radios or uh, on a Facebook and uh, I know what's going on for example when in Iran in a, in a background or somebody who lives in Africa knows what's going on in a, in a background and uh, all of us can bring those in and, and talk about it we don't have to wait uh, something shows up and um, I, I try to make it my business uh, to 
to find out more because I don't live in Iran right now to see what is the uh, new thing that's going on in, uh, for example, in Iran for the past 30 years. Um, and then uh, when I was, uh, when I was uh, in 1990, in 1995, 1996, I think I was taking a, a class um, as my major, uh, parasitology, vertebrate zoology class. And uh, I remember very clearly my professor's name because I usually don't remember them, uh, Dr. Alsap. And then uh, after he lectured, he showed us a movie. And in this movie, um, I saw the African people sitting around their hut, and then um, almost all of them under their skin, they had, they had these huge worms that they would take a little wood and make a little hole in their skin and uh, open up and they get the head of the worm into the wood and they roll it around. And they had to be very careful because if they, they moved it too fast, it would break and part of the worm would stay. Uh, so they, that way they would get rid of all the worms under their skin. And then after the lecture, uh, Dr. Alsap said, uh, there are about more than a million people in Africa just dying from parasitic diseases. Well, at that time I was very naive. And then um, I went to him after class. I said, Dr. Asab, I think you made a mistake. And he said, what did, I, what did I say? I said, you said more than a million people die in Africa from parasitic diseases. And he said, Azar, wake up. This is the reality. I said, Dr. Asab, but there's nothing on the news. Uh, I don't see anybody in the United Nations talks about it. This is a huge problem. And then he's looking at me like as if I was just, was like, was it, I didn't know anything. And then I was really, I was stunned. Actually, it occupied my mind for a couple of days. I said, and I keep talking to other people about it. I said, do you know there's more than a million people in Africa dying for parasitic diseases? And I was really shocked. But these are the thing going on in the background in every nation you live in different ways. And uh, in New York, actually, we have pretty much like a melting pot. You, you can see like my own office is international, uh, like people from all over, they work in my office. Uh, but each of them, they talk about the country, there's something going on. And what I like to do, I mean, as a Universal Council of Farsi, but I'd like to say we have to pay attention to what is going on and it's been there and is uh, for ages, not wait till something happens on the media and we go and talk about it like, a, I don't know, somebody get killed or tornado or a flood, anything like that, or an earthquake. Uh, we can bring those and talk about it or whatever we can do. Uh, and that's it. Thank you. Any other comment? The hunger and diseases has been with us for millions of years and as we have mutated, we have found or our body has found a way or we have found ways to overcome these infections and these parasites. Parasites mutate with a new ways and we mutate to find a new way to to overcome them. We we have been with this for centuries and will not change. This will not change. And if you look at the diet of human race in the past uh, uh, let's say hundreds of years, you look at the Indian food, look at the Far East food, look at the African food, the herb, the roots we eat, is to overcome these kind of parasites and infections, that is part of our food. Now, in so many ways, with the ganses, we have found a solution for totality. We see it in the test done in Ghana and in other laboratories, uh, that uh, we are overcoming a lot of diseases, a lot of parasites and all sorts. We don't need to look for herbs. Now we have found a common material which can help us in different mixtures. In a coming time, when we had a meeting even yesterday in the 
manufacturing management team, one of the new products, which is uh, designed or be designed and delivered in Africa, is single portable systems, which can literally can take the water from the river and within five minutes drink from the other side. We don't need the solving the test has been done, it's confirmed now, we have to make the machine new for it to deliver it. The same will be across the Europe. There'll be the same across most of the European countries. We have a huge problems in Europe, in Italy, with water contamination, in Holland, in France. Governments cannot come, come out with these anymore. In the West, we are more in danger than in Africa, because the mutation is so immense, where there is a slow. We're seeing new diseases, we see new infections, which we never knew. Um, if uh, we explain what we know, the new diseases in past 10 years, uh, evolving, uh, pharmaceuticals can't even catch up with. The reason is, we become a multi, race, national, one nation. You have people coming from Africa, bringing their problems from the Asia, from South America, from Europe, from America, from every corner of this planet. For example, we put them all in the city of London, 25% of the city are non-English, 30% plus now. So, these mixtures gives a new chance for these parasites, these illnesses to evolve. We are seeing diseases, illnesses, which doctors can't have anything for, they just call it a cancer, or they call it something else, because they never seen it. It has similarity, something or something they can't understand, they call it a cancer. So, we always evolved through diseases, and millions of us dies till the others have received, or our genes have found a way for it to survive, and then it has spread across, that the rest have learned to do it. This is not the end, that one million die in Africa of parasites. If we do not understand the whole process of the technology, millions of dies of us, human travelers in the space, just by simple energy transfers, which can adjust, attach, become part of ourselves, and then we call it viruses. This is part of the evolution, till somewhere our amino acid creates itself a new shell. This is foreseen, this has happened in the space before. When the race enters a new dimension, the amino acid or the structure of the block of their life evolves to a new dimension, where the space energies can be stored, that every energy does not become a virus. As we said, the virus is when the additional energy is attached to the amino acid. With what we going through and the evolution which we will have, our amino acid, if we come back to Earth, will have a new evolution on it, which means it'll create itself a secondary package. Most probably our amino acid will have a fifth element to it, which is the element of plasma, which is absorbing energies, which allows normal life, in spite of new energy, so viruses gradually become irrelevant. These are not part of what it is, it might happen, this will happen. We have seen this evolution in other races in the space. So, viruses, bacteria, parasites, are part of the process of our evolution. They live, we live, we have to find a way that we become strong enough to be able to overcome it. Our ancestors use garlic, ginger, any kind of fruit, to overcome these parasites. That's why Indian food is so rich with herbs, because each herb kills one kind of parasite. That's the only reason we see this. The same in South America, if you look at the Chile and others, these are all used as a parasite killer. Now we add them as a taste to our food. The same is with Africa. In so many ways, we see different parasites, which will be evolved in Europe, as man over millions of years, now it's only a few thousand years in Europe, they will come to it, they will evolve, in the space we evolve. But this time it will be viruses.
not parasites. We learn. This is part of the process of being a living thing on this planet, in this solar system, in the universe. One of the things which man will learn very quickly, <coughs> is that viruses of upper level of the Earth, are different than the viruses in the solar system. The viruses in the solar system are very, very different than the viruses which are in the galaxies or in the universe. Because each one carries a specific strength, each one has its own unique character, characteristics, and then we have to adapt to it. We have to find out a way. We become, if those of you have said many times before, think that the open space is the place that we can do whatever we like, yes, but with it comes gaining new knowledge, with it comes understanding new dimensions, with it comes in understanding what we are getting ourselves into. It's a wild west frontiers, if you understand what it means. It's the time to learn, it's time for us to understand. It's time for us to be able to evolve to a new dimension, to a new understanding. In understanding the totality, not just what we would like to do. In the process of the teaching in past few weeks, I have brought you a step by step closer, walking away more from the systems, that you can become more knowledgeable, you become more trusting in the work of the soul of the man, in the inner strength of the being of the man. A lot of you have a problem in understanding how do I evolve in a space? This is just a dream. But if you understand and you be able to do it on Earth, learn it, then you can practice it, when the environment is right. Many of you think, how can I reach my soul to evolve? You cannot change yourself to the Martian figure, or to the planet Zeus figure, because we don't have its atmosphere. Whatever you do, you evolve, you end up with two legs and two arms, and four, ten fingers. Because it's the condition of the field, the strength of this planet. But, you can start practicing, to gain strength, to gain knowledge. But you have to know where you go to practice. Where is a sandbank that you can test and try? Many of you will start evolving in understanding of the process, by understanding, where do I have to go to see the change? Where is what I'm looking for? It's very simple. If you have not understood by now, I can explain to you in a very, very simple system, in a very simple way. I spoke with about ILS, that is the wish of a man, is the emotion of the separation of the soul of the physicality with the soul of the man. So, when you want to change, we understand it has to do, it is connected, and from what we know, from our experience, has a strength, and it has to do somewhere between the physicality and the soul of the man, in the brain of the man. So what does this mean? This means, desire to change the physicality has to be one step before the creation of the total manifestation of physicality. You create physicality out of the fields of the soul, and then depending on which part of the dimension of the fields, which is the filter of the brain allows, connect that to the emotion of that part of the physicality. So, in so many ways, we have the soul. Can I share a screen please, Rick? 
This is important. Be able to do that, Mr. Kesh. Please do. What we need to understand is very simple. This is our soul. This is our physicality. Here, between the two, we have what we call the brain of the man, which itself is a filter of both emotions and physicality. It carries the strength of different materials, which the more you go this way, you go towards physicality, the more you go this way, you go towards soul. So, if you understood this, somewhere in between is the borderline, where more or less in this borderline, in this filter zone, before the information of the soul is in strength, converts into conversion of the soul, of physicality, to order the physical part, there is a part where both souls interact. The interaction zone between the soul of the physicality and the soul of the man as a total. Somebody said, I don't believe in physical soul and the soul of the man. It's all one. It is not, it means you have not understood. If you want to understand very well, look at the dynamic core. We get an empty hole in the center, but we have cancers which are in the periphery. But each one of those cancers has its own center, so has its own soul, has its own control, has its own principal matter. So, the two coexist, and the coexistence of the two dictates the position of either one in respect to each other. It's the same with this. Now we have a boundary, where in this boundary, we call emotion. This is the part where emotion decides, interacts, joy, sadness, happiness, whatever you want to call it. Then, you got to understand, the transformation from the energy of the soul of the man, to the physicality of the man, then has a strength. So, what we understand is very simple. We get happy. We cry. We transfer the emotion to the fields, and where it matches, affects the eye. You see the tear. We get afraid. It affects the part which is the fear strength. We shrink, we shrivel. We come to the point, now we understand, from now on, where, before reaching manifestation of physicality, dimension of emotion, don't forget, as you go this way, you are dealing with a higher strength field. Then, now we have to find the field in this bracket, where we understand, where we pre-interact, before the creation of the physicality. And, with it, creation of the total brain section, which controls the physicality. So, if we can operate, if we can operate in this zone, then, in so many ways, if we can operate in this zone, we find the strength of this zone, which comes through the want of the man, what you call wish, I can, then, you decide how you manifest yourself here.
ILS or MS operate in this zone. But you separate the physicality away from the motion, from the soul of the man. You need, if man has managed to evolve and understand that the soul physical part can separate the creation from the soul of the man fields, that they amicably, they decide to say goodbye to each other. So, you don't say goodbye, you create a new condition. So, in the space, using, understanding this phenomena, we can wish to retract and do not manifest in physicality. But, allow the physicality to hold on, or the field to superimpose on the physicality of the part of the soul, over the soul of the man, till you decide by emotion that you manifest yourself as a new entity, in the new dimension, because now this new environment needs new soul strength. Now you are in Jupiter. In Jupiter you appear in the body of the man, you need a lot of clothes, gloves, hats, oxygen tank and everything else. But if you manifest yourself in the pressure pressure interaction of the fields of the Jupiter in respect to the Sun, you walk as you're walking on Earth. But there you might have to be like the souls which live above us. You don't need arms and legs. Now you understand for the first time, this power has been within us, but we never realized. Those of you who See changes, you wish I want to be white. You wish I love a man so much and I want to be black, that I'll be like him. You see the change of the skin. You see, the power is so much deeper, that for the first time man moves into this new purple area. So, we already know this, now we need to practice. The only things that man can do on this planet, in a way, to practice, to understand, to exercise, to understand the power of his soul, the changes he can do, is try to change the color of your eye. The peaceful of the eye. What we call the death color of the eye. The peaceful condition, that everything becomes transparent. Try, you can change the color of your skin. You can interfere with the wish to color the change of your hair. You can change your height. You can change your feature. But, it needs understanding. It has to be, I can, I wish, is to, for my soul to find, to learn. Is the promise of the physicality in the field of strength to the soul that I do not want to separate. I want to be part of you. I am part of you, but I want to change. In the past, I used to change, uh, I, what you call it, filters and have a different blue color eye or yellow by just putting a filter on. Now I want to do it myself. Many of us can do. Many of us have done, but we never noticed. It's within us. We do it so naturally. We have done it, but we never understood it. We see it, we never observed it. We do it as adults, with our partners. We do it by standing in front of the fire. It's hot, we retract. What about if I stand in front of the fire, and go back to the dimension of the pink area, that I want to stand higher temperature, that I can create the body condition, environmental condition around me, that the field of the heat does not change me, I stay at my wish.
We saw this very clearly, if you haven't understood, with the videos on Tuesday, with Tom Sellers, where the field across the hurricane has stayed so beautifully full of flowers. You are that flower. You are that circle. But you have to understand how to reach it. Then you can understand the heat, in a way, because you wish to. Stand next to your partner, stand next to your child, and extend that I want to be larger than my physicality, that I love my partner so much that they want to be part of me, and then you see how you feel. All of us have this power within us, and this we need to do before we can go to space. That we have learned, we don't get trapped in the strength of the physical matter of the Earth, that then it can devastate us in the space. Those of you who have matured to move into that level, you will see, you can do, and you will enjoy the beauty of the new knowledge. Those of you who cannot will ridicule, but that's the state of the knowledge and the strength of your understanding. In time, when you understand it, you can wish it, and it'll be done. Your ten fingers cannot change, but if you are ready for this, then when we go into space, you know, you understand, you become part of the plasma energy of the system, and you manifest yourself when you need, the way you need. You can stand the space travels in any dimension, that time becomes irrelevant. Time does not exist in the space of universe. Time only exists when there is a decay in the strength, that you have to go from one to another. If you stay of the same strength, time does not exist, because you are always the way you are. This is the attribute, this is the beauty of the Creator. And man is part of it, so we know it. We understand it. Now we have to practice it. We know we can do it. Many of us do. We change our features to be the way we want. We change our need the way we want. Now, we can change our physicality. There is part of you, that if you understand, can make a condition, that physically you move in the direction of the soul, but not in the physicality or matter of the body of the man. And then, you can decide in another point, I want to be here. And you can be one second in Tibet, not the second in Manchester. Because the speed of travel for the soul of the man, compared to the matter state, is zero. If you are very clever to play the game, they can see you simultaneously, both in Manchester and Tibet. Because when you speak, within a second you are the other place they see. It has been done. Many, many masters who understood this, have practiced it. Many people who've been through the pain have practiced it. The conversion of the interaction to the matter soul of the existence. And this will become day and night. Christ, bless His name, as I said last time, has showed us this. Many people do it at the point of the separation of the physical soul from the soul of the man, and at that point, they take the destiny. And then, when the environment changes, they change. They manifest themselves in the position, in the shape they want. These are not any more fairy tales. Now, these are realities through the new understanding of knowledge of plasma, the interaction of the plasma, and the existence of the plasma. If it's hard to understand, as I always say, look at it this way. The soul of the man is the sun radiates unconditionally. You trap the field, the strength of it, 
as part of the field and strength of the matter of the earth, you appear as copper, zinc, amino acid and man. You entrap the same field at Jupiter, you become different according to its environment. When we get to Jupiter, to Venus, we'll see the animals, livings that are there according to the field. There is nowhere in the universe which is voids of life. Anyone says, life is exclusivity of Earth, as we say in Arabic, Astaghfirullah. It means we have not understood the essence of creation. It means that we are ignorant. This is the beauty This is what we got to understand. With a new teaching, with a new knowledge, man become the creator of himself, in a physical dimension. But not creator of his own soul. There is a big difference. The creator of the soul of the man, from interaction of the fields, has the essence of the creator within it. So is the physical soul of the man. I wish you could understand. The knowledge you gain is the true essence of the knowledge of universe. It's you who has to understand what strength you want. Do you want the strength of the joy? Your body will be joyful. You want to create the strength of sorrow your body will show sadness. You want to enjoy a new presence, free of cancer, you do not need no cancers and no cores. As now, you carry that dynamic reactor, which is your soul, in interaction, with the dynamic essence of the physical soul of your body, and you can create a new body without cancer. Many people do this. Now that we understand, we can practice it. Because then in the space, when you are hit, or you enter a new dimension of field, then you don't need to come back to get the license from FDA before I die you cleanse your body with a new fields to be set, and that body is not needed to be returned back to space. This is the time of the transmutation of the mixture of fields, not any more one field, is the next step up. You have the transmutation of element from one thing to gold or silver or whatever. We learned that we can have the transmutation of the fields that we create from fields elements or from elements fields. Now we learn about the what I call, or what you call in the present language, molecular plasmatic fields of different strength, which allows us to create the transmutation of the 
molecular plasma. And then, this becomes the essence of the creation of life, like the amino acid. You change the field, and then, in a way, the field change, and the order they have, they decide the structure of the manifestation of the man. There is only one entity, and one entity only, which is in the universe, is the same in respect of the creature, position and the space. And that is the soul of the Creator, which is the essence of the creation of all being across the universe. And it's sacrosanct. And we all carry the same. When you understand the process, then you can change. Then, being anorexic will not exist, because I want to be slim, but healthy. I will be slim, and I'll be healthy. I don't need to die of anorexia. If you are overweight, and you have all sorts of diseases, and you want to be slim, you can do now, if you understand. It's not in your image, it's in the strength of the soul, of understanding the field of strength. But it needs a lot of practice. As we say, if you go for target shooting with bow and arrow, you don't get a bold eye every time, unless you are lucky. You find your arrow 20 meters away from the target, and then you might hit just a haystack. Needs practice. But when you practice, you have to understand what you are practicing, what you are asking. If you ask, if you need to be just for pleasure of seeing you can do, you will never achieve. If your wish is of the order of the pleasure of the soul of the physicality, the soul of the man will gift you. There is a big difference. Go back to my teachings in the past. You ask for yourself, you shall not receive. Now you understand, when you give to be pleasured, you receive. Now you understand, the wish of the man is a dealer between the soul of the man and the soul of physicality. Then you understand. As you want to have the pleasure of blue eyes and the blonde hair, And it's not for the emotion of the man, but the beauty of the physicality of the essence, that the soul will get pleasure in receiving it, you shall be. Understand the knowledge. Understand the principle. Understand the process. The physical soul of the man, needs the pleasure to know it can be, that it can be enjoyed, the view of beautiful words of what a beautiful eyes, what a gorgeous hair, what a talented, knowledgeable man. And the only one which can do, is the movement of the soul of the man, in the absorption, interaction with the fields of the emotion of the man. If you go back into the teachings, if you go back in the space technology, which we always speak about, it's very much, we can do it like this. This is the soul of the man. This is the physicality of the man. And this is the emotion of the man. I 
I give and take. You move the emotion that way, you change the physicality this way. You emotion, you move the emotion this way, you change the physicality that way. Now you understand what we call the emotion. This is what I called in all the medical teachings, in the health teachings, before in the first, those first 30 odd teachings of the health, always in the part we explained, we refer to emotion. The emotional part of the physicality. Now you understand. I'm told I'm short and I want to be tall to enjoy the beauty of being a tall, a slim woman. And that gives my physicality a pleasure, the soul of my physicality, the soul of the emotion, the interaction, the intermediary will create that. And it can happen in a second. Christ did it in no time. And I always refer back to the writing of the Prophet of the past. The level of understanding is not just a physical understanding, it's the power, the access to the soul, is equal to the level of the, all the Prophet of the past. Which means whatever you attach to the beauties of the Prophet of the past, is the beauty of every soul of every man of the time now. It's the confidence which you need to build. The reality already exists. This was the gift which was given by Baha'u'llah and we cannot change it. This is what we have to understand. As knowledge has been like a ladder step by step, so has been the faith in the belief in the structure of the man. We have to understand the science, and with it, we understand what science has given us in a path of belief of ourselves. The process, the ignition key, the understanding of the evolution, or what I call Darwinism of the space technology, is understanding the process of the interaction of the fields, of the souls, of the man himself. We evolved to live new environments, now we have learned what was causing that evolution, is the soul emotion of the man. And that is the key, the distance, the space, the strength between the physicality soul and the soul of the man. In my book, this emotional soul, we call it the transition. It's the strength which this soul of the emotion takes, which changes the distance and the time of the transition between the soul of the man and the soul of physicality. Because it can absorb less and more to bring the magnets closer or separated from each other. Try to educate yourself, in a very rapid way. The time has come, to open the doors of space and universal community to the man, to the, according to the knowledge of every individual. Many of you will start talking, I've been here and I've done that, and I was asleep and I went there and I've seen that. Is not a dream anymore. Because you decide, you want to be somewhere, you have learned, you can change your formation, you can change your physicality according to the point, you'll be manifest, if it's on Earth, on this planet, if it's beyond, according to what you appear. This trip will be a very lonely trip. Because each one of us, needs to practice it, on our own. In a coming time, very much as you go for driving,
they ask you to have to sit for a test to see if you are a good driver, if you can handle it. In certain trips in the space, they ask you, can you become black? Can you become white? Can you become tall? Can you become short? Can you have three eyes? Can you have two eyes? Can you be blind? And you have to pass that test. It means in a space you can handle your soul to manifest yourself. Those of us who is not mature to that, has cannot reach the understanding of control of this transition of the emotion to reach what I call the pink area, then we become passengers of a spaceship. No one will be left behind, but some of us choose a different method of transportation. This is the new knowledge, and when you do it, do not get scared, the first times is scary. You see the hand is the hand, but it doesn't feel, I don't know this, this is a different thing than I had. Because now it's different, the strength of your own soul is like, it's the same soul and you were a six-year-old boy, and it's the same soul, suddenly you're a 16-year-old boy. And he's the same soul, now you're a 60-year-old man. The soul has not changed. The interact of the emotion, in respect to the physicality, leads to the change. In that process, in body of the man, the misleading understanding, we call it puberty, or maturity. Now we understand where it comes, why it triggers new life, because I want to reproduce, I want to be one who can create another. Then the soul moves. We have, in the process of life, due to conditions of this planet, have given it a cycle. We need so many years to gather so much energy. But if you have pushed the energy forward in the strength, there will be a six-year-old boy who will have the maturity of 16 and the life of 60. This is the beauty of it. We see this, the existence of three different ages, or ten different ages, or two different ages, in what we call the beautiful people. One is a boy, one is a girl, because one has decided their physicality manifestation to be a slightly different point in the structure of that pink area than the other. One behaves as a girl, and one behaves as a boy. One becomes very attractive blonde, and the other one behaves even, has the same physicality as dark. To him, to his soul, he has the image which he has created, in respect of the physicality. Now, this goes back to the teaching of the Trojan horse. If you understood, the spirit of the soul of the emotion move into the soul of the world leaders in the direction of the peace. They want to say, we are creating arms, they say from now on there will be no arms. They want to sign an order to produce more weapons, it says, no signature, I'm not signing. Because if you understood, that the essence of the soul of all of us is the same, so, the interaction is the same. So, when we cannot lose to destroy, we all become man of peace through the soul, interaction of our emotional soul. This is the beauty. And God help those who try to resist it. Try to become the man of wisdom of the space. 
not the wise man of space. There is a big difference. Those who understand the wisdom, will live a long time. Those who become wise, lose very fast. Because, being wise, conditions you to a physicality condition of existence. The wisdom allows you to exist across the universe. Now you learn something new today, and I hope you understand it. That was the gift, for your 200 teaching. Listening and understanding. For those who understand, you have received for the first time, the key of detachment from physicality. As you can stay in the essence of the soul, in the strength of the soul. And then, use that, to reach the others who, become men of peace. Peace with the soul of their physicality, that the soul of existence will work as one. I have written with my pen, the order of peace. And I will achieve it. Because now, I have gifted you the knowledge. Try to understand, the field the strength of your soul. Try to understand how you can interact with it, that, before it manifests itself in physicality, you can decide the beauty of the happiness of the physicality of his soul. You cannot use it to damage. It will not allow you. But, the need of the joy of the physical soul, will allow the soul of emotion, to position itself, to see its pleasure to be given. Because the Creator, the soul of the man, gives anyway, unconditionally. The soul of the emotion, the strength, becomes the filter of what the strength is like, a tuning, not on the radio. Would you like to be FM, or would you like to be, Another one. Would you like to be at 89? Or would you like to be at 110? 89 centimeters, 110 centimeters, or 180 centimeters. Would you like to be FM? A female? Or would you like to be another one? A male? Now you understand. We have done it in a physical life. Now we have to understand, to be able to do it with the, our own soul. We cannot touch on it. That's why we cannot harm. We can present, that if the other would like to learn the frequency and the strength of whatever you call it, that's your problem, that's the matter state. The soul has no frequency. Plasma has no frequency, Unless, it's the plasma of the different strength, in trying to receive, but as it has part of its structure of the field of strength within it, there is no need for a frequency. Those who speak about the field of the strength of the frequency of the soul, they have not even understood, as I said in the teaching before. Our soul receives the fields which it needs, it does not, it's, a, it's not matter state, that it needs to penetrate, to vibrate, to have a frequency. This is the difference. Try, to understand, the process. How, you can interact with your soul, and how the interaction with your soul, allows to create, manifest, the man of earth, a peaceful man of earth. Because, when you move in the direction and the strength of the soul, that you can interact to create a new manifestation, one of the things you find out, you cannot harm, because then you harm yourself. In a way, by harming, you create a condition which you didn't like, or your soul didn't like. So, now you still exist, but not what you wanted. You'll have the blue eyes, but you still stay with the black hair. 
because you interfered in taking from others by deception, in being blonde and blue as everybody enjoys. If you become blonde and blue for giving pleasure to the others, you receive it. If you become blonde and blue to take from the others to steal, you stay black and brown. And vice versa. I use the colors for expression, not for difference in essence of the soul. Good day, Mr. Cash. Yes, Jalal. I have not finished it. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Continue, sir. You got to understand that if you've been with me, and you've been along the 200 of teachings, many more, I never carry notes and I never read up a structure. It's the message from the creation of the creator of the soul of the man. So, you have to understand, you have to be clear, all of us from now on, according to our understanding and not our intelligence, will become men of space. But, according to which space we want to be the man of, it's a big difference. Huge difference. You all have been given the gift to reach your souls, and now it depends which one endeavors to do so. You got to understand, if you wish, you achieve, but you have to understand what I said in the teaching of Tuesday. Wish doesn't exist. The power of being able to do what I can, exist. If I wish it, it means I can do it. It's just I have to find a way. So from now on, don't make a wish. Go and say, I can. Because, by being able to do it, to achieve it, to reach it, I bring pleasure, not to myself, but understanding that the soul of the physicality is part of, but is separate from totality of the essence of the creation, in the dimension of the soul of the man at the point of existence. Then, the universe is your oyster. The faster you lot learn, and start doing it, the sooner I can go home. My mission is accomplished. My pleasure, my rest, my existence is to go. Do not trap. Try to understand the essence of your own creation through your soul. Try to practice with the emotion and strengthen the emotion, but never touch the separation between the soul and physicality. The soul of physicality. then you jump into the dimension of prior or pre-physical condition. Understand the process. In so many way, feel the process, feel the fields, not just wait to see physical manifestation, if I was right. <laughs> Try
try to test your strength, step by step, to a higher and a higher and a higher strength. And then, repeat it. That I felt, not I don't see. I wish does not exist. I can, becomes the language of the time, the essence of it. To get seven billion souls of a man, and trillions of souls of other creatures on this planet, can take a second, if everyone moves step by step. But time doesn't exist, so we do not need to worry. But if you understand, in that process, because we change, we automatically change the one next door, next door, next soul, next to us, and there are. The critical mass is one soul. But, if the other souls have the same strength as the critical mass soul, and that's the problem. And the soul of the man is reaching that point. We are here the right time. It's just crossing the T's and putting the dots in the right place. I hope you understood. I hope you understand the gift of the 200th lecture. And I hope you start practicing it that soon all become part of the universal community in the space of the universe and we enjoy peace because the ultimate goal of this is the peace on this planet peace in the soul of the man in the dimension of his physicality and then the opening of what you call in the world of man the heavens but everything is and is available and it's for man to enjoy the Garden of Eden, which is the universal soul of the creation. Yes, Jala. Good day, Mr. Gash, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but, uh, you know, I have a little uh, space in my work, and that why I'm jumping. And in uh, this thing, there is a, a beautiful example in uh, what is the difference between the plasma of the body and the matter. In, uh, in the, what? In the, the plasma, what, uh, what we contain in our body, yeah. it's, not, it's not really a matter, like uh, a shape. In, uh, in the last uh, few days, I saw um, a video in the uh, internet by YouTube. There is a child in Egypt who, who is uh, crying stones. And it's coming out of his uh, eyes as a tears. And it uh, manifests itself as a, as a stones. And this is a live example how it's plasma uh, transferred to matter. But the question here, why is transferring this uh, tears as uh, stones? Ask from the emotion of the man. He's a young child, he's uh, 10 years oh, old. Oh my God, he's so mature. Uh, okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe he has seen all the pains in past years. Did he cry a stone from the day one he was born? No, no, he just uh, come out uh, recently. What has he seen? The mass murder of Sufis? Uh, maybe, nobody knows. Yes, the soul knows. Our soul is aware of everything, it's just us who wants to play with it.
Any other question? Um, hi, Mr. Kish. This is Aza again. Um, I have a question regarding ALS. I know you wrote a paper on it. Uh, I bought your papers. I haven't, I just ordered it. Um, when you look at the ALS, uh, is a destruction of the neuron that control the voluntary muscles and uh, that gets to the point of uh, not breathing and then uh, losing movement. So, and then also they talk about the genetic aspect of it. So when these people get to that point, um, what is the genetic part of it? Because if the, pay, if the person decides to, because of the emotion, to get to that state, how do we come up with, gen with genes at this point? I think Mr. Cash may have dropped out temporarily. Also getting some clicking in the background. I'm wondering what what that might be. I thought it was on Mr. Cash's uh, line, but it uh, seems to be independent. Hello, I'm back. Hello, Mr. Cash. Yes, sorry. Azar, God didn't want you to hear. Uh, that's, that's okay, Mr. Cash. I got the message. <laughs> 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 I got the message, actually. That's <laughs> okay. But uh, can we put the picture up again? <laughs> Mr. Cash? Yes. Hello? Azar, are you there? I think I think there was someone else said hello, Mr. Cash. It wasn't me. No problem. Um, but if that person has a question, uh, please do because I can wait. Okay, go ahead. I think it was just feedback from Azar onto Mr. Cash's mic. Okay, that's fine. So, Mr. Cash, when the person when we, you see, when you made that line, if I had the picture, you see they had the green part and then you made the red part and then you had the yellow line in the middle. So I the lost everything. I don't have it anymore. I don't know what you're talking about. But, but uh, use your imagination, Mr. Keshe. It's impossible. I don't have much. I mean, you don't remember what you, what you drew? Yes, I do. I'm just pulling your leg. Okay, Carry that's on. fine. Okay, so you had the green, which is the emotion of the physicality, and you had the red, which was the emotion of the soul, and then you had the yellow in between, which was the ILS. So ILS, it's right? It's, separate, it's not ILS, is we call it because it's the wish, because you got to read the paper I've written, it's called ILS, is a death wish which comes through. And in that process, we... Um, we allow the emotion, the feel, the strength of the emotion, the soul of emotion, to be equal to the soul of the physicality, and so the separation. But then it still needs time to allow the physicality, every soul, every cell, to um, to organize itself, that is separated in physical term from the body of the man, even though it still carries a soul. Mr. Keshe, when the emotion changes, I notice, like I'm paying attention to all the uh, physicality changes, like a temperature of the body, uh, like when we get hot, when we we uh, have certain emotion, the temperature, because I recently pay attention to this. What is the heat in the body going, becoming cold, or certain things makes you really heart palpitation and becoming hot? Or I notice uh, 
the infinity loop you make uh, you um, you light it the heart also plays the inf infinity loop like you can feel it like goes like that and it's kind of in and out and uh, actually yesterday i was uh, trying to explain to a patient who also is uh, just recently um, found out about the fish technology and how the field works and then I was explaining to him uh, that I had a couple of bottles of ganses in my office. One of them was a mixture of CO2 and copper because I'm trying to make CO2, but it became combination. So I was explaining to him that uh, when I hold this, I no longer feel anything. And because I'm used to it, then I was trying to show him. And then I asked him to hold it and he started feeling something. When I got it back, and as I was explaining to him that if I hold it, I don't feel anything. Suddenly, I had a huge feeling of movement of once I held it, of my heart between the bottle and the, my heart was a communication was going on. And I said to him, look, I don't think I'm correct in what I told you because right now I have a huge feeling, uh, vibration that I never, never felt before. Uh, so what oh, you do? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Did you ask him what he emo what emotion he put in the in the bottle before he gives it to you? No, I told him just close but your eyes and uh, no. feel you got to see what he deposited in there that you received it. I see, I see. I Maybe see. he was trying to tell you he likes you. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe no. he likes the knowledge you carried to him. It's a I thankfulness for the knowledge, and then you feel it through your soul, or you call it through the heart. Because what he told me, he told me that he felt something going to his right arm up and down and into the bottle. And then he gave it to me. Then I felt this huge movement. It was exactly like an infinity loop going between the bottle and myself. Try not to touch the bottle. <laughs> okay, Mr. Kesh. Now, the beauty of it is we do it. Uh, one of the... One of the... Um... One of the points which we do, we never realize, and is part of us, you say the change of temperature, the change of physicality, the change of body, we are used to it, especially female. Even though men go through the same. We change, we evolve, we change to be wanted, to be loved, to be able, that's why we go into the emotion of um, reproduction. At that point, everything changes because there is a new soul to be created. Availability of all the beauty to be given to that egg and to that sperm. That you get the best of me. I don't want to give anything else up to date knowledge, feeling, emotion. And we evolve, we change. The skin changes, the the thoughts changes, everything changes. But we never stood still, that is us, through the emotion of giving, we move. If you take this step further, and understand the strength of it, you can move into the dimension of the pink area, where you decide how physicality manifests itself. We all do it, if we are there to give pleasure to our partner, in that point, we all do it. It's part of the structure of the creation of human being. We all know how to change our physicality, but we never stood still, the strength of it. The strength of love, the strength of wanting to give, the strength of being able to produce the best, bring us to that point, but we never thought about it. So, if we can change our body, our emotion, our temperature, everything else, for a very short time, all we need is to understand more, to stay in that condition, or go higher strength, then we understand we will come to touch on physicality, because then we are there. We all have this, it's part of us. But, as I said, we all used to be nano-makers in the Chinese pot. 
but we never understood the nano and the gans production. We all know this change. Especially if you've been married, you had a lover as a partner, and you were there for his pleasure or her pleasure, you change, you feel it. Because it's the time of creation. And we enter that point, but we never understood. Now we understand. If that is so high to get to it, it needs slightly higher strength of understanding of the field, the strength of the emotion, then you can become what you want. Because at that point, you give life to become what he wants. Why can't you do it for yourself? I wish you could understand this. Oh, it'll be easy, I can, I can finish it up. This is why we lie when we have affair. Because we want to deny that pleasure to our partner, and as a punishment for it, because then we distance. The physical interaction, uh, in the dimension of the physicality, the physical soul, has its own correction of the balance of the field. And that's what I said, those of us who have been correct, have corrected their path, understand that bring balance in what they've done, or moved, and that others have to move because of them, they will understand, and they'll go to the next stage. Any other question? There's a question from Hassan in the Q and A. Um, how do you explain each time when I feel extreme pain, my whole body sweats and it's like everything shuts off and I lose conscience, uh, consciousness between two and five minutes? And when I'm back, people around me tells me that I went into convulsions. Is it my body detaching of the physicality to help me or to show me the way of disconnecting totally from the physicality? Thank you. Can you repeat that again, please? Okay, it's Hassan who says, how do you explain each time I feel extreme pain, my whole body sweats and it's like everything shuts off and I lose consciousness between two and five minutes. When I'm back, people around me tell me that I went into convulsions. Is it my body detaching of the physicality to help me or show me the way of disconnecting totally from the physicality? That looks like epileptic attack. It means you produce so much information that the switch point in the, bo in the bottom of the brain cannot handle, so it switches off. That's, that looks like this happens, people who go, this is, this is uh, a, what, what I understand, from my knowledge, when you go to this, especially you go into convulsion, is, uh, is you create so much information, that somehow the body cannot um, pass through, and we have a switch, I explained this in the teaching, medical teaching, health teachings, that um, switches off till all the information, it's just like a red light, traffic light, and you go and it passes through, but it's too much of it. The convulsion, if it's a bit vomiting, we understand, because it's just putting the physical body in the condition of a roller coaster. That's not what to do with this, that's, is you create, because, uh, attack, like, you don't get the epileptic attack, but the condition like this is that you produce so much information that cannot, there's misbalance in the electric condition between the physical part of the body and the brain of the man. So, it shuts down or filters to a certain amount that all the thing goes, it's literally, you have a very big bucket and very small pipe. 
you create so much uh, information in this big bucket and you have a little pipe to go. So you have to let it all to siphon through. If it shuts and open, every time the pipe will shake when you open it. We get a physical motion, like we say, a plactic attack. If it's some of us doesn't go to that shutting down, but it goes to a point of always staying open, but this is as I can do. So the body goes in a position of rest, till what the information is gathered on the top, slowly filters through. You don't have, if you have that switching motion, because it's so much of it, you get the shocks. And what you see, jerking of the body, and then bit it, when you shake so much, the stomach balance, as it changes in the magnesium level, and you go into convulsion. We understand this process fully now. So, it has to do with the amount of information you clear, and how much the switch allows the information to go through. That's nothing to do with what we so are there doing. might be a way to regulate that, but that would be done through the medical uh, section. Have to uh, this is, this is very easily done. Is you have to regulate. Um, in the medical side, in the health side, doctors can tell you epileptic attacks or what they call it. Um, uh, these things are finished. We, there is a solution for it. You just need to balance the emotion, the balance of the emotion, fields of the emotion with the physicality, and the brain doesn't produce it so much. People produce epileptic attack themselves, through the increased information, energy, in the brain, which cannot be passed on to to, a, to the physical part. It's like you're getting a pocket, which if you have a tap open in it, at a certain rate, what comes in, at the hole you create at the bottom, can go out. But if you suddenly increase the water, of the, the amount of the water from the tap into the bucket, bucket gets filled up, but the tap at the bottom, the hole at the bottom will not change, it still passes the same amount. So now, you have two choices, to let it go very slowly, till the bucket gets finished, or you open up, you allow the water, which is going, let's say on the land, to soak, to sink down, and then you open the tap a little more, and the water can go down more. And then you empty, till the bucket is finished. Um, pardon? I'm going to say that Hassan mentions also that it's just when I feel extreme pain that these reactions happen. Yeah, so pain is information. Pain is information, brain creates so much pain, now it has to handle it, so it switches off, maybe that's why we see it. We create pain by thoughts, and then we create a plastic attack. We create a plastic attack information by doing of our own. A lot of, 95% of the epileptic attack is done by people by themselves, not by somebody else. So control of thoughts would be a way to control the... Uh, there is a balance of thought, not control of thoughts. That's right. why epileptic attack, epileptic medicine nowadays does not work as such. Because they try to control rather than balance, you mean? That, yeah, understanding the underlying cause, now we understand. I've given many lectures about epileptic attacks. Uh, a doctor like Dr. Rodriguez and medical group, they understand it very easy. You can finish epilepsy in a matter of days, but you have to understand people know it's gone, but they were used to getting attention for it, because it's part of, when it happens, it brings attention, you know, when the people jump on top of you, and you wake up, oh, so many people, that must be very important. So become an ADD. So you have to, uh, once you correct the flow of the current in the field, the strength of the brain, then you have to satisfy the emotional side, and it's done. I've had, I know, many, many cases like this, and you can just walk away with it. Actually, one of the cases they brought for us in, uh, in Belgium was a case of 35-year epilepsy going and getting fixed. And he says, a, no doctors has managed to do it, and the water has done it, because their health, and they say, is a medical practice, it's not, is a field understanding. And this is a criminality which is pushed in by them. One of the cases they brought is that, I have stopped 35 years of epileptic attack with 20 tablets a day to zero. And it's a, it's a crime to bring in knowledge, to be able to help somebody, 
with water, this shows the criminality of the nation. There shall not be a Belgium, I promise you that. There will not be no blood of Belgium. So. This nation has done enough crime. Any other question? Yes, good morning. This is Libby, Mr. Kesh, from the... Good morning, Libby. Um, yesterday, Caroline uh, reminded us that one of the best ways for us to bring peace within ourselves and was to shine like a sun, to go inside of ourselves and, and feed the internal flame, the internal light. And I, I just wanted to hear your understanding of what we're doing when we do that, so that others who may be looking for a way to help themselves uh, in all situations by shining their light as bright as they can for all, for all beings on this planet and everywhere. Could you expand on that for us a little bit, please? I, I always say, for you to shine, you cannot lie about yourself. That's, that's one of the things. In a way you steal, you don't give. And many teachers lie to themselves. And the students take the same path the wrong way. You can shine, because you know the direction you give the light. You can shine, because you understand the field strength. So, the teacher of your physicality is your soul. And what you allow to manifest itself as a physical condition, which is not stealing from it, allows you to shine. Then, in so many ways, your physicality carries the feel the strength of your soul, that allows you to shine. There is no filter of emotion to lie. Lying, it means taking from your soul, what is given to reach your physicality. Stealing, you call it. And, uh, if you become, that there is no emotional, interface between the two, which means the body of the man, the physicality, the soul of the physicality of the man, will reflect directly the light of the soul of the man. So, when you interact, you interface your emotions between your soul of physicality and the soul of life, then you absorb, you steal from it. This is what's called full transparency, unconditional love. When it's unconditional love, you don't put any emotion in it. It means the light, the strength of the soul, feel the strength of the soul, reaches the field strength of the soul of physicality. Nothing taken, nothing is stolen, nothing lied to, to be diverted. This is, this is what it's all about. Then you shine, in a physical soul condition, the same as the soul itself. You become the reflecting mirror, not part of interaction. I hope I could explain. I I would like to understand the lying part, because... When we lie, we take away from the line of the truth. We introduce an intermediary, which is not the true light, it's the reflection of the light. So we take away from it. We take away from um, the reality of the beauty of the soul of the man. Are our lies, our beliefs that 
um, we don't understand are, are incorrect. And so... We as, lie. Why? What's the reason that we lie? We are trying to divert something, or we are trying to take something which is not us. So, or we have taken something from someone, which we want them not to see that we have taken, but they know we have taken. In the Islamic world, in Quran, there are two types of lies. There is a white lie, and a, another lie, which is a lie we call the black lie. The Quran is, uh, Muhammad Rasul's name has explained this in the, or as it is in Hadiths of uh, Quran. And, there is no, or very little punishment for a white lie, but there is a very heavy punishment for a lie, which is a proper lie. And then, where do you distinguish between the white lie and a not white lie? Because, when we were children in Iran, we played with this. It's a very plain and narrow line between the lanes, uh, hoping that you don't fall off the wall. Uh, um, some of our, um, Islamic colleagues can tell us what the difference between the white lie and Quran and others. So, when we lie, we we expect to receive or get or have a diversion that we can get, so it's a stealing. And some of our teachers lie. So, the student receives information which is not clear, because it's become in the essence of the teacher. Some is done deliberate, but some is done to benefit others. But we've never been told, so we pretend I've never been told that it's a lie, how could I do that? And we carry the mis misknowledge forward, because we inform the wrong way, and behind that lie, many actions takes place by other souls. But even souls can see it, but they position themselves to correct the lie, which means it comes back to the one who lied, who stole. Thy shall not steal. One of the messages which Moses never brought down, was lying. Because he wanted to lie to his own tribe. Thy shall not lie. Moses threw the stone away, because he wanted to tell lies, that he benefited by it physically. Now you know one of the commandments, which man never received. And yet we've all been trained to lie. This is the interesting part, that is such a quandary. When we interact with people, um, how are you? Oh yeah, no, I'm fine. Meanwhile, your dog has died or something, but you're lying for social standards. Um, and it, I had a- This is comment. called the white light in Islam. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so those are forgivable. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you become a very good Muslim white liar. Now we have to find out the other one. Did you kill okay. the cat? Yes, I didn't. But yes, I did. I was listening to um, uh, um, a discussion where the mother slips on the snow and being pregnant, she has the five-year-old daughter with her and um, when she comes home because she was apparently in pain, tells the father that the five-year-old girl dropped me and I would have lost the child. It's her fault. Because the father loved the daughter, so she had to muck him up, she had to destroy the daughter. This is what goes jealousy between mothers and first daughters. There's a long history about it. And uh, the father beats the child up. Why did you do this? Why did you, uh, what do you call it, uh, push your mother that she fell? But the girl said, Papa, have you seen the shoes Mama wears? Ten centimeter high, heels. How does she want not to sleep on the snow? The lie of the mother got the beating of a child, but 
it lost the respect of the father for the mother. There is something which a lot of us never understand. In the world of psychology, they don't teach us. Because it's been ignored in so many ways. We know a lot of mothers are jealous of their first daughter, because it's a woman, it's a competition, and the fathers always look at the daughter as something weak, they have to protect the boy, because a footballer, he kicked the balls, but somebody will kick my daughter, so fathers are very protective about their daughters, because now they are responsible for this little midget born. But the mothers don't see it as that. They see it as a competition, the mistress. All the love I used to get, now he gets it. All the protection I used to get, now she gets it. I have to do something with this. So they try to demolish the first daughter, or the daughter which is loved by the father. This is called psychopathic behavior. But a lot of mothers do this, because they see the girl taking the love. But in fact, they created that love to be loved, for the father to appreciate the mother, for the beauty which has given to the creation. But there's another angle which they never teach you, in the world of science, of psychology. And that is, the daughter sees the mother as a mistress. Because the father always cuddles me, kisses me, but he goes and sleeps with her. So, from the age of three to seven, we see this. Always say to Caroline, we are in control of our children, we train our children, they are ours for the future, whatever we teach them up to the age of seven or eight. Then on, they mature, especially girls, by age of nine, ten, to go to your menstruation, to be able to give life. So, in that four or five years, we see it. And a lot of girls, a lot of girls, who attach themselves to the father, or they become, I was with my father, I'm no, like, a, what we call it, the tomboys, which always follow the father, and the father gets a lot of attention. The mother creates that mysterious belief, behaving, trying to demolish the daughter, because now is a mistress in the house, and nobody ever looks, that the daughter sees the mother as a mistress, because I get all the kisses and the cuddles, comes night time, Papa puts me in bed and he goes and sleeps with her. And then, when it comes to the marriage, these girls become adulterous. There's a full history about it. Because, now, they want to preempt what the father did to them. They do it before the husband does it. And then, you see the behavior pattern, it comes into lies, into cheating, in taking soul from the partner. When you look at, and you study, the culture of the psychology of the man, you will see it. I had a case, a woman, in front of me, wanting to get rid of her 13 year old daughter. I said, why? She said, you know, she does this and that, and the husband would nothing to do with her, because he loved, he adored this daughter. And I sat there in front of me, I said, Madame, you gave life to this, because you, you, the love you had for your husband, and this is a gift you gave to him, because he wanted a daughter. You have to enjoy you being created, that you gave love to what you loved. And she said, I've never seen it this way, so I've destroyed my daughter. I said, now go and build it up. She came back to me a few months later, she said, since I understood, I never lived such a beautiful life. Now I love my daughter, because through loving her, my husband loves me, and I love my wife, my husband. This is what a lot of people don't understand. This leads to a lying, and this lying goes to next to next. The mother lies to the child, and the child lies to the mother, and they see each other as competition. And then it goes into the next cycle of life. The stealing carries on, the lying carry on. That all. Most of the women become adulterous. If you look at their background behavior, ask them a single question. What was your relationship between you and your father? 
psychological book tell you, read it. With emotion, we create lying. Because no one has ever educated us to be aware of this. No one, they teach us maths, alphabet, history, geography and everything else. But they never teach us in a school from very first ages, first years, social interaction of the man, in life, in respect to the soul of the man. 99% of the problems we see today doesn't exist. Mothers get pregnant with another child, when they see the daughter is close to the father. Because I have to kill that competition. Or I bring one which I can love myself. Understand, we got to understand emotional behavior, in the body of the man, and then what it leads to the other. If you had the 12 commandments, now you understand the 13th one, which Moses never brought down, because he wanted to lie to his tribe from day one. And you see the Jews still doing, because the, the, the commandment came, they didn't receive it, but still lying and cheating and creating all the wars. If Moses would have put a punishment for lying, you would have had a different course in understanding our soul. Thank you very much, Mr. Kesh. And my sister was the older sister, and she definitely went through that. And then my mother named me after her, <laughs> after herself, rather than, it was a very interesting childhood. So what you're saying is reflected in my experience. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We understand a lot, but to teach it and people understanding it, does not need acceptance in its comprehension. Thank you very much. Any other question? Well, <clears throat> Boniface mentions in the chat, uh, Mr. Kesh, Moses brought the ninth commandment, which says, you shall, shall not bear false witness. Is this not about lying? No. Lying is totally different. Lying, you make it to benefit yourself. Witness is as you've seen something, we don't want to talk about it. This is why Romans, if you go anywhere where Romans, we never spoken about this before. You go to Manchester, you go to Rome, you go to any Italian city, go anywhere which Romans been, you always have a huge squares in the city center or in the center of population because they were called witnesses. People, there was no court, there was no uh, registration office. I sold the land to you and I paid you, but there is nobody there. So you go to the square and you went, call the guy, come here, be a witness. I give you one, whatever, dollar or whatever. I sell the land, yes, I bought the land, there is a witness for it. And people just walk around the square collecting money to be a witness. And then they became trustees. Advocates came through that. What we call the advocates came, these people who are always witnesses, independent. But the Romans brought you them. Yeah. The, lawyer, the lawyers followed shortly behind, is that the way that... <laughs> that's the one, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To well, make that's sure. very interesting what you just said. I hadn't thought of that, that people would pay someone to be the false witness for their contract or for some other... It's a third party witness. Is This is part of the structure of the Roman life. Has been. That's why we have these huge squares. The huge squares was just for witnesses walking around. Right. Witness for hire. <laughs> Yeah, that was, that's what they did, but they became trustees, because if somebody asked once what happened, he says, I was witness, and there's another witness who's seen that he was there when they talked, then they get credibility. They were credible witnesses. And uh, when they stood in the time of discussion, and they won because they were there, that's how Roman buying and selling done, because there was not much papers hanging around. I didn't stick a cow with the papers, but I sold in front of you, the cow is yours. I couldn't claim it back, because I, I handed over in front of someone. Exactly. Well, Trevor asks in the live stream, the big question, what is stealing? Do we steal when we take a picture of someone? Or is it attaining knowledge stealing? 
he, he'd love to know more about what you mean when you say stealing. Stealing, you can interpret it in different ways. Uh, stealing is, um, uh, is in the English language, I think it says taking without consent. So, adultery is uh, stealing, sharing my love, giving it to somebody else without my consent. You taking my car without my consent. You coming to my home and taking when I'm not here and it's without my consent, because I left it there, I come back home. Then you become a thief. It's the same process. I trust you, I leave you with my love. Then, you said the same thing to me. I trust, you look after my love, because when I give love, is an emotion I have given. Then, you go and share yours with somebody else, because it's not what we put, put in the same pot. So you're stolen from my emotion. I park my car outside my house. My child is home, there's nothing wrong with it. But while I'm out, the key is on the door, he picks it up, he takes the car, he crashes the car. In law, especially in British law, there is a very clear difference between this. The father says, we had many cases like this in British law, that he says, my car was stolen. And he actually, not to increase the insurance policy, he puts his child as a thief in the court. So, did the child, being part of the family, had a consent, because the father taught him to drive, he got his driving license, he always driven, but this time, it's to the benefit of the father, to put the son in a mess, than himself. So, stealing has become a habit of the man, taking, or pretending to be taken, or taking from someone, when you're not allowed to. When, there is no consent. If you look at the history of uh, faith, nobody has ever stolen as much as the prophets. And the habit of prophets still shows in the behavior of their followers. Because it's the same kind of stealing by deception, by women, emotion, or by wealth. One is Judaism, one is Christianity, and one is Islam. Just look at the pattern. Each one has encouraged different kind of stealing, but has dressed it in the frame of the religion. And the followers, thousands of years later, still do it, and it's their right, and there's nothing wrong with it, because he did it, we do it. Any other question? Uh, we do have an outstanding question in the q and I think I know what your answer will be, but I'll ask it anyway. Um, Ram so you asked, answer it, so if you know the answer, you answer it, then I see or tell you yes or no. I think you'll have a, a, some interesting answer to it, it's just that you, it may not be as direct as the person wants. I'll ask it anyway, but can you ask Mr. Kesh what his feeling, what is his feeling about the Russian physicist Grigory Grabon, Graboni, Grabononi, it's misspelled, it should be Grabovoy. Grabovoy, who has an original approach of soul and physicality, especially to using digits to heal or to get changes in life. I don't know who it is, I cannot I make it. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> there is a very bad thing about me, 
I don't read about the other scientists. That's Somehow, right. Um, yeah. From my childhood, I always thought, and I never accepted a lot of it, even the, my teachers forced me to read scientific books. I said, no, I understand what you're telling me, I understand, I can answer you. That's why I was good in physics, in and maths, because it's the fact on the table, nobody could lie and you could do it yourself. Mm, good point. Is there anything you'd like to say? I thought you might like to say something about the idea of using digits to heal or get changes in life. You did talk about uh, um, use of hand postures and so on in the past, and I don't know if you want to get into all that right yeah, now. Yeah, but the thing is, what you put to the figures, what does each number mean? Because don't forget, it's a pre-associated understanding of what it means. One is, I've been stolen once, two doesn't mean I've been stolen twice. And what is my reaction if I've stolen once? Okay, it happened second time, my God, the third time, I'm a stupid, so I have different emotion towards one, two and three of the same thing. So, it's numbers, is connected to the emotion. There is this, um, what do you call it, this machine, which now it comes from the Russian Space Agency in 1950s, 60s, which they done. They say it goes to every cell, you can see what happens. It's a lot of rubbish, because I did a lot of tests on it, it's all false. Makes a lot of money for a lot of people, and just because they don't understand, they believe it, but we ran a huge test, six months trial on it. And three, three times I've proven this, uh, what they call it, they put helmet on people. They affect people, but it's not what they say, or the reading is wrong, because it doesn't actually follow what is being put in. But, as a scientist, he's done a lot of work on it, we have to respect it, but I don't know, so I can't make a comment. Okay, thank you Mr. Kesh. Um, is there any other questions or... Mr. Talk? Kesh? Uh, this is uh, uh, Azal again. You know, I have. One we call. know your voice so good. You don't need to say who you are. Because okay, Mr. Cash, that's okay. Uh, you know, I was. Uh, this question actually is for my father because last time I was there, I was explaining the technology, your technology, to my father, and then he said something to me uh, when he was younger. He said his grandmother. I mean, when he was growing up. He said when we were born, or any child was born in the family, his grandmother used to hold the baby immediately when the baby was born, uh, because they used to be born like in the house, not go to the hospital. They had women come to the house, and then deliver. Yeah, how hospitals those days? It they didn't exist. Like yes, and then he said uh, the, his grandmother used to uh, say, whisper the azan in, uh, into the child's ear, and suddenly he she would say after the was finished, she would say, uh, like for example, in Farsi, she would say, impera suhte ziyade, or something else, like uh, uh, like the man is gonna be after her, or something like that. And then my, my father was saying, how, does she, how did she know uh, something like this about the baby? She made it up, it's the feeling she had, it's the emotion she receives. She speaks her emotion. But there's no, no truth in it, no totality. No, you know, you and I know in Iranian culture, we have a lot of these. They, they used to say, okay, so-and-so is pregnant, and then they say that they send the woman to the first corner to listen to the first conversation, and the guy says, oh, I have to go to Bazaar and do shopping, and they come back, hey, he's going to be a businessman, because they're going to the Bazaar. You know that this is part of our culture in Iran. Huh? So, whatever we we live like this a lot, or when they, are, they just get off the taxi to go to the hospital and they see a man passing with something and they say, Oh, it's going to be a boy. And they go in, it's a boy. So, you see, because the man said, Did the sex of the boy change, the body change from the time they saw the man till they got into the hospital to the delivery room? This is, this is the way we, we would like to believe, and they just talk about their emotion. I remember when I was very young, maybe eight, ten years old, 
my great-grandmother's long silverish hair, blue eyes, used to sit around the horse, in the house. And nobody ever told me, she's my great-grandmother. I knew this woman was always there, we couldn't understand, what is this old, old woman doing sitting by the horse? And when she died, they explained to me that she's the grandmother of your mother. And she was very serene. I never remember ever speaking to her. I have no recollection, re recollection of the talking to her. She was a very serene Jewish woman. She lived by Torah, because we could hear her. And um, the what I remember um, in Shabbat dinner when we were on the table with my cousins and my uncles. Um, she always used to sit with respect, and she hardly spoke. She used to look, and the children used to bend backwards to give her what she wanted. Her eyes was the word she ever whispered, as far as I could see. I'd never seen her speaking. For years, I used to go to my uncle's house. And they used to say, with her eyes, she runs the family. Doesn't matter what she said, but she said she wants the rice, or she wanted the clothing. When she looked at the pillow, the old, then nobody said she wants a white pillow or the red pillow, the pillow was there. Um, and this is the way we interpret what the feelings are. And in Iran especially, we rely on this, we call it respect. And whatever we feel, we talk, at the eldest one, they talk, we listen and we respect it. So, we always say, in the Islamic world, I've seen what you say, I've seen it with my cousins, where they were born, when they come home, they will say Quran, we, they slaughter a, a sheep or a chicken, for the new life coming into, and the Islamic, what do you call it, um, ways of celebrating life, when they used to come home, I've seen it happening with my cousins, when they were born, they were at home. And it's the same, we carry a deep culture with us in Iran. And we respect the word of Quran. And when we say, it's the beginning of life, because we start the day with the Namaz. Whatever she said afterwards, it was she was her feeling. Thank you, Mr. Gish. Thank you, indeed. Shall we call it a day? Yes, Mr. Gish, sure. Thank you very much. Um, there is something which you see, can I explain, Rick, or shall I leave it to you? Um, please explain, you're talking about the, the video okay. that I'm going to show. I can just say briefly, we'll show the regular um, video with our, what we call the dance music, and then after that, you can explain what we'll show after that, Mr. Gesh. We have decided to put a teaching which you saw uh, partially in the, the beginning of last week. It's about 21 minutes, we can't put it in the beginning of the teaching. But from now on, we put this, which brings the whole totality of the knowledge of the Foundation, in so many ways, about nanotechnology, and the soul of the man, and everything else with the Foundation stands for peace. That's why we, we developed the technology. So. After the, what we call, closing session, from now on we try to, regular basis, put this video of the teaching, it's done by the head of the Keshe Foundation, Ella. She's made it, it's a beautiful job she's done. And, um, you can listen to it if you like, you can let it run, and learn. Every time I look at it, I see another beauty in it. I've watched it many times, it's beautiful, because you've got to look at the depth of information, and there is so much. Freeze, block, stop, read, there's so much knowledge in it, put in there. It's a lot of time spent to build this. Um, and uh, if you are a teachers, workshop teachers, use it. Let the people understand from the beginning what the technology is about. It's not just about the nano GANs, it's about using the technology to achieve peace. And achievement of one nation, one planet. Thank you very much for today. 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Cash. I was <clears throat> going to suggest the same thing. There's quite a bit of uh, writing that uh, you might want to stop the video or look at it next time and uh, just reread it and get uh, more depth. I believe the, the video is available on our YouTube account so that if they can, uh, if they want to, they can go watch just that video with uh, the, the writing and everything there. All right, maybe we'll highlight that as our featured video then. That'd be a good idea. Okay, well, I believe that wraps it up for the 200th Knowledge Seekers Workshop. Thank you, everybody, for hanging in with us for these 200 workshops. And uh, for those that have come in recently, well, congratulations and uh, welcome. And uh, we'll end this workshop as we have with many recent ones with our musical uh, interlude. And I think that's ready to go. Thank you, Flint. I just want to say thank you to everybody for joining us on the on these 200 work workshops, plus all the previous ones. Um, it makes our hard work worth it. Can I say something which I forgot? Uh, we announced it on Tuesday. Many people don't listen on Tuesdays. Uh, please, um, we made this announcement on Tuesday. Cash Foundation opening number of factories around the world. We are looking for people who have the knowledge of the GANS and Nano, because it makes it easier than us bringing people to teach. If you're looking for a job, in number of countries coming up within next three months, two, three, four months, we have one exclusion, which is Ghana. Ghana, we are looking for master degree minimum to work in the factory. Uh, the factory in Ghana should be opened up in the next couple of months. We are looking around about anything up to 500 people. We put advertising in Ghanaian press in next few weeks as the management team will start training. We are looking for a staff in Italy, in south of Italy, in Brazil, Mexico, Arizona, South Africa, Australia, Iran. Iran possibly in two locations. Uh, if you are Chinese, Keshe Foundation New Center in Shenzhen We need a lot of people who understand in the factory level, except the assembly sign, which is International Assembly location. These are huge number of jobs. The factories are coming up into line. Nigeria, Nigeria is one of those which will come in next year. UK, Switzerland. We are looking for this. Canada is on the horizon. We are looking five separate locations in United States. Cash Foundation Global Operation in United States will expand across the country. The investment and the financial support for this is already in position. It's just now that we have factories are getting lined up, some, what do you call it, the partitions and the piping and the roofing and everything is finished and coming to light. We need a month, two months to train the staff properly. So. We are looking for a large number of staff. Uh, the Cash Foundation website will indicate a line. We'll establish a website this week that you can apply for jobs. We are looking for those who came to the Cash Foundation knowledge seekers with the love of the technology. Not, we don't want to employ people that they just come to work because they have, they don't carry the feeling, the ethos of the Foundation. We, the salaries will be paid in line with the international, national rates, but we keep a national rate across the world that we can move stuff around the world. So, Togo, Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa, Kenya is for sometime middle to end of next week, next year. Austria, Italy, Switzerland. Germany is on the horizon for us. We have no plan, but we are planning to do. France and Spain are in line. In Asia, we are looking at Singapore, China, Tehran, Iran, United States, Canada. Canada, there is option two. This will be decided very shortly. Mexico and Brazil are secured. 
Peru will be moved to Lima from the present location. And then there on other number of the nations will come. We have 11 factories lined up opening in next few months. Then by after that, we are looking at one factory opening per week to increase the number by the end of last next year to 35 factories. We have all lined up, we know what we are doing. What we are asking you, if you're looking for a job to work with the foundation in the production, in innovation, in computer programming, in um, design, a list of jobs will go up, working on the factory floor, developing new technologies, assembly lines. Um, in Accra, we are looking at... Yes, you mentioned that, that people should have a master's degree or some sort of... Uh, yes, that's for Accra only. Accra... I okay, thank you. Accra is the only nation, we have a reason, we have an agreement. Uh, Togo will be more, about, more or less about the same, Nigeria will be about the same. Um, the, the Romanian factory will support coming to production very rapidly. The negotiations are going on, ongoing. It's just that we need time to move on. Keshe Foundation Manufacturing Management Team are highly skilled people in their um, structure. They are not the Keshe Foundation followers who understand, but they are highly skilled internationally. They've been brought in. So, I, I we have brought in highly skilled. If you have a skill, we are looking for international sales management. If you have international sales management, please contact the webmaster. We look into, but you have to be someone we know deeply in the, the structure of the foundation, you understand our work. We are looking, any of you has expertise in international distribution. We are looking for highly professional accountants for the country and international side into the banking of the Keshe Foundation. These are the jobs on offer to take up today. Not possible. If you are an international lawyer and you understand the work of the Keshe Foundation, the English member of the Universal Council, he's a lawyer, we would like to ask him if he can contact us, if he can help us there. These are the teams. Ghana, we expect to employ up to 500 people, increasing it to one and a half thousand within the next six to 12 months. These are massive factory structures we set up and we have financed and getting finance to go through. You are not, you got nothing to do with me anymore. It's all handled by the Keshe Foundation Manufacturing Management Group. We have even, we are investing millions of dollars internally from the Keshe Foundation. We are not looking from outside for any help. We are not borrowing or anything else. So, we know what we need. We need beautiful souls who see through the change, what we want to do in the factories to be able to finance the banking, helping the others, and bringing one, one nation, one planet into operation. Please, we do not look at the color, race, creed, language. We are all one. We need to understand this. And we are offering thousands of jobs. The first two, three hundred I announced today. Barry Italy, if you are Italian, Cash Foundation supporters, you know where to contact, how to be there. But go through the channels we set up, the factory is already, all the rents, everything has been paid a year in advance. They are setting up the structure, next couple of months it comes into a full production. We need Cash Foundation supporters, which are thousands of them in Italy. The jobs now are on the table. Austria, we are looking at that option. Switzerland is another option. England is on the table, but we do not want to go there till March where we have set everything up. Um, if you have, and you are uh, expert in Spanish and Portuguese language for Mexico and Brazil, Brazil factory has already been agreed, it's just now we can, once we get here, we just run over into, it takes us one, two months just to set the whole factory. These factories are fully automated, they are pharmaceutical level standard, then you understand what it means. Highly computerized, highly controlled, and there is all mechanism, there is no, um, what you call, hand-on things, unless it goes into the 
uh, component manufacturing. If you have products which you think we can market, bring it to the uh, factory manufacturing section. We pay, we give you a loyalty, doesn't matter how many of them are made different countries. You might think it only <coughs> can be used in, let's say, in Germany, but the same product is used, let's say, in South America, or in United States, or in China, you benefit by it right across. But then instead of you dreaming, I made such a thing, we let your dreams come true, the foundation will finance the machinery, the system, and the spread of it across the world. You got to understand, we are here to serve you. And at the same time, we have to be able to change the course of humanity through knowledge and through understanding of the technology. Everything we, you deliver to us, you want it to be marketed, we certify it. It will be certified in the country which is going to be sold. Nothing will go out of the Keshe Foundation factories without certification. And we are looking to 100, 200 products worldwide so that we can place different factories to create different jobs that allows everything goes. We can produce the same material in UK, but we will not be able to sell it in the United States. So we have to produce in the United States according to US standard. So it's a different game. Our team, have, we have a specialist to do this now. So what we are looking for, accountants, in especially international accountancy, we're looking for lawyers, international lawyers, who can manage all these, um, what you call, employment contracts, uh, uh, intellectual right, uh, processes that we can get things certified. Uh, everything else we need, so handling the properties, the everything else which goes with it. So, and we are looking in Ghana today, for 150 to 300 people, immediately to be employed from January, February, hopefully once we start going, to be trained, to be going ahead with it. If you have other skills, like automization, the skills, and you understand the work of the Foundation, Nanotechnology, Gansas, or whatever, contact, we are looking for about maybe five to ten, as we put teams to uh, install from one factory to another, we can have two or three teams working in different factories as they are coming online. Uh, these are the things we are looking for. You have the expertise, by hopefully next week we give you an email, which goes to the manufacturing team, and they decide, they set up interviews, and uh, we bring other people in. We need a lot of people. Thank you very much indeed. Very good, thank you Mr. Cash. Thank you. Okay, it looks like we'll close off for now, but I'll remind people that there's uh, um, two videos that you'll be seeing, and uh, you may want to pay more attention to that second video um, and play it back later. Or it's also available, you can have, you see the link in the uh, chat for the KFSSI Peace Timeline. That'll be the video that'll be shown as the second video. I'll post that in the live stream as well. Okay, Flint, I think we're ready now for the last part of the show. Okay. Thank you very much. And thanks to everybody. And thanks, a special thanks to our support crew that have labored so hard over the last years to present all these Knowledge Seekers workshop. Thank you, everybody that uh, have been there in the background and uh, to make this all possible. And of course, to Mr. Kesh as always. And Mrs. Kesh too. All right, let's carry on then.
Just as we require Earth suits to live on this planet, we would require ships for travel in outer space. However, these spaceships must be dynamic and conscious in nature. In other words, the spaceship must easily be reconfigurable and adaptable to meet different challenges and scenarios in different parts of space. Therefore, constructing a spaceship out of similar materials as we would do a car, boat, or airplane just doesn't cut it. The spaceship must be created out of Megrav's plasma. Since it is naturally conscious, Megrav's plasma can be concentrated and configured by thought, according to the requirements of space travel. Being dynamic, the spaceship would be able to grow to accommodate more within herself or shrink to navigate difficult areas of space. Crew living spaces would be dynamically reconfigurable and never boring. During space travel, the spaceship would replicate the Earth's gravity field via Megrav's plasma in order to protect the crew and for the crew to be able to function as they would on Earth. Various cosmic rays and gravitational fields of different magnetical strengths would be encountered during space travel. Through Magrev's plasma science, these rays can be converted and used according to the needs of the crew and spaceship. Space travel means being away from Earth for months, years, or decades at a time. There's no practical way to bring large stores of oxygen, food, and water from home for such long voyages. Once again, Megrav's plasma can be constituted in such a way that vital nutrition would reside in the very air that the crew of the spaceship breathe. Eating and drinking would be reserved purely for pleasure and as a social activity, and food and drink can be constituted out of Megrav's plasma as desired. Are you ready to become the space explorer today?